How do you do? I'm flipping science and looking at biofuels. Don't let the day go by gasoline. Gasoline. So science understandings we're going to look at. Biofuels are produced by present-day biological processes, identified by ethanol and biodiesel as biofuels. Describe the production from biological materials of ethanol and biodiesel and explain how fossil fuels contribute more to than biofuels to global warming. So biofuels are produced from biomass. And they're a renewable energy source because the biomass that you're producing can be regrown relatively easily. Um, you can also produce biofuels from waste organic matter, which again contributes to its environmental um, niceness. The main two biofuels we're going to look at are bioethanol and biodiesel. So bioethanol is ethanol, it's the same as alcohol that you drink. Biodiesel, uh, long chain uh, methyl esters that we burn in um, engines. Now, they come from organic matter. If we're talking about bioethanol, it's normally coming from uh, good carbohydrate sources, so things like sugar, starch, cellulose, so they're good, full of carbohydrates. Looking at um, biodiesel, biodiesel is produced from uh, fats and oils. So down here we have a graph showing cottonseed oil, soybean oil, and bovine fat as sources. So let's look at these. Bioethanol is an alternative to petrol. Um, it's often added to petrol in certain percentages, um, so it dilutes down the petrol. So E10 is fairly common around Australia, so it's 10% ethanol, 90% petrol. Some cars are able to run completely on ethanol, um, but often they need to have some modifications in the engine to, for that to happen. So for example down here we have uh, Commodore, you know, Holden Commodore cars were produced and for a while, not anymore. The later models they ha were capable of taking E85, so 85% ethanol, 15% petrol. So that could be purchased. The problem with this is it wasn't readily available, so not many people ran their car on the uh, bioethanol uh, petrol blends. Bioethanol is derived from plant products, so it can be produced from plants grown specifically to produce bioethanol, but in Australia, particularly, it's uh, produced from the waste products of, uh, of sugar production. So leftover sugar cane is used to produce ethanol in Australia. So there's several steps involved in turning a carbohydrate into glucose. Um, firstly, you need to hydrolyze normally polysaccharides into glucose, occasionally disaccharides into glucose, and then you need to uh, ferment the glucose. So here's some equations down here that might be handy. So um, this is a representation of a polysaccharide. So we have cellulose up here as an example. We're adding in N water molecules, and if we do that, we get N glucose molecules being produced. Um, this could be moderated by an enzyme like cellulase, which we have over here. Um, if you have disaccharides, so this might be left over from sugar production, for example, um, you add in one water molecule to a disaccharide and you get your two um, monosaccharides being produced from that. Once you produce the monosaccharides, then you can ferment those into ethanol and carbon dioxide. So the really key part of the process is the fermentation. So fermentation turns glucose into carbon dioxide and ethanol. And the ethanol, that's the bioethanol that we burn in cars. When fermentation is occurring, carbon dioxide is produced, so you observe an effervescence. The way it works is uh, in, yeast is a fungus that's single-celled, and it produces enzymes that are very good at breaking down uh, glucose into the ethanol and the carbon dioxide. Um, and yeast has been used for a very long time. It's used to make bread, it's used to make uh, beer and wine. So it's been used for a very long time, and now we're just kind of using it again to produce um, ethanol that we're using specifically for, uh, to replace petrol. Um, there's many different sources of carbohydrates that are suitable for ethanol production, and it really depends on what's available and what's relatively cheap too. So cellulose is um, wood fiber, and it's the cell walls of plants are made of cellulose. So waste wood can be used to produce ethanol. Um, disaccharides like sucrose, so these could be waste products from sugar production. They could be used to make um, ethanol. In these cases, of course, we need to turn them into a monosaccharide that can then be converted by yeast into ethanol. So here we've got an example where starch is being broken down by an enzyme called amylase to produce the glucose. Um, amylase is present in your saliva. So when you eat food, when you eat food, um, starch from food that you eat can be broken down by salivary amylase, which you have in your mouth, to the glucose. Here's a bit of a diagram showing how bioethanol is produced. So you need to have your biomass um, that contains your carbohydrates. In this case we're looking at um, using trees, so that means there's a lot of lignin which is very difficult to break down. So we need to be able to break that down in some way. The way we break it down is uh, we use enzymes to break it down. So here we've got cellulases and hemicellulases which are breaking down the wood into your small monosaccharides. So down here we've got pentose and glucose being produced. 
But this is done by um, organisms. So this is done by enzymes produced by organisms to do that. Then we go into the fermentation tank where we have the uh, yeast being added and uh, ethanol is being produced from there. Many, in many cases, the ethanol is distilled away from other products that are produced, so that you get pure ethanol or higher purity ethanol coming out rather than it being mixed with other products. And then you can use that bioethanol uh, to run your cup. Let's look at the conditions required for fermentation. So fermentation, you're relying on an enz enzymes from yeast to do this. And yeast are organic, they're biological, they're alive. So if they get too hot, they don't work anymore. So the good temp best temperature for fermentation is about between 20 and 30 degrees. Um, outside of those temperatures, the enzymes start to denature and that make, renders them ineffective. Fermentation is an exothermic process, so in many cases the fermentation vessels need to be cooled down so that it avoids going over these temperatures. And fermentation is anaerobic respiration, that means you don't want to have oxygen present. So it's pretty much done in the absence of oxygen, although a small amount of oxygen is required for yeast cells to reproduce and grow. But generally we'd say it's in anaerobic conditions, so no oxygen present. So let's look at some carbohydrate sources. So bioethanol can be produced by, by anything that has reasonable amounts of carbohydrates. It just depends on um, what's available and what's cheap. So down here I've got some sugar sources. We talked about cane sugar, as that's a big source in Australia. But in the US, sugar beets are also used. Starches from plants such as corn is very common. So corn can be grown to produce bioethanol. If there's too much corn required and not enough people are eating it, then that waste corn can go into bioethanol production. Then you have uh, grasses and woods that aren't that are waste or that grow really quickly, and they can be used to produce um, the glucose that then goes on to produce the bioethanol. Switchgrass is being looked at. It's kind of a weedy type of grass that grows really, really readily and really, really quickly. Um, so it's being looked at as probably a major source of bioethanol production. So we need to look at bioethanol production in terms of how good it is for the environment versus burning fossil fuels. The carbohydrates that are used to produce the ethanol, they came from photosynthesis reactions in plants. So in photosynthesis, carbon dioxide and water, carbon dioxide from the atmosphere, water from the ground, they're combined using light energy and in the presence of chlorophyll, which is uh, found in green plants, and they produce glucose and oxygen. And that glucose is what is ultimately turned into the bioethanol. So the carbon dioxide required to produce the plants comes from the atmosphere, then you do have some carbon dioxide being produced as you produce your bioethanol, but then when you burn the bioethanol that carbon dioxide goes back into the atmosphere and then can be reused again. So it's a reasonably carbon neutral um, energy source because the carbon that goes into uh, producing the bioethanol is burnt off and then released back, so it just goes in a continual cycle. There are small amounts of uh, carbon emitted um, throughout the process, so transporting, for example, the energy required in the production and distribution of the biofuels, but still, it's better for the environment overall than burning fossil fuels. So now let's look at biodiesel. So biodiesel is produced by reactions called transesterification reactions, and that's done to fats and oils. So transesterification is where you exchange carbon chains between an alcohol and an ester. The reason why this works is because um, the triglycerides that we're converting into the biodiesel, they're triesters. They have ester groups. We react that with an alcohol down here, for example, we're using methanol. So we're exchanging the ester group from the uh, glycerol backbone with the alcohol group from the alcohol. And instead of, and we get three, uh, three methyl esters being produced and a glycerol backbone. So this is a handy reaction to have a copy of because this is a good example of how biodiesel is produced. The reaction conditions, um, you use a catalyst. The catalyst can be acidic or basic. In this case, we're using a potassium hydroxide catalyst. So here I put potassium hydroxide in brackets, but really that's the catalyst up here. This reaction is also reasonably slow at room temperature, so often the reaction vessel is heated up for this to occur. Here we have a specific example where we're showing the transesterification. So we've got three, again, we're using methanols here. Reacting with our triester, our triglyceride, and we get three esters being produced. We get a really long chain, and then we have the ester group, and then we have where the methanol uh, attaches, and we get glycerol as our byproduct as well. These three long chain carbon esters, that's what we burn when we're burning biodiesel. So here's an image showing how biodiesel is produced. So here we're using a, bio, a vegetable oil or animal fat. To that, we're adding the methanol and the catalyst. So in the reaction we had before, it was potassium hydroxide. So they go into this uh, big vat, and they're mixed together. They're heated up, 
and you get your transesterification happening. The biodiesel is less dense than the uh, oil or the glycerol, so the biodiesel goes up to the top of the tank. That's then tapped off, and then that can be transported and used. The glycerol sinks to the bottom because it's quite dense. Um, the catalyst is regenerated, so through the reactions that occur, you get your catalyst back. Um, this is done with an excess of alcohol. If we see back here, in this case, it's showing it as an equilibrium reaction. If we have an excess of alcohol, then we push it in the forward direction to produce more of the methyl esters, the biodiesel. So let's talk about the carbon neutrality of biodiesel. So it's produced from oils and fats. If we look at plant oils, for example, so here's a nice little cycle down here. Photosynthesis is used to produce the plants. The plants produce oils um, as a result of photosynthesis. And if we're going to use those oils to produce our biodiesel, so that's this process down here, the transesterification, then burn it. The carbon dioxide that went into producing the plants um, is then sent back into the atmosphere in the combustion of the biodiesel, and then it can be reabsorbed by plants to be reused to make more biodiesel, and so on and so on. Fats are a little bit more complicated. Um, fats are produced by animals. In this case, the animals are eating the plants, so we kind of chuck those in here, and then the fats are being produced by the animals as a result of eating the plants. If we look at beef, for example, um, it eats grass, and grass undergoes photosynthesis. So we would have uh, kind of an extra step in here. So that makes it less beneficial for the environment in several ways, but it is still reasonably carbon neutral. So let's look at some combustion reactions. So here we've got um, ethanol, so bioethanol being combusted. And here we have an example uh, long chain ester that's being burnt as biodiesel. The carbon dioxide being produced in both of these reactions was originally used in photosynthesis to produce the plant in this case and the animal in this case, or the plant in this case as well, depending on what the source of the biodiesel is. So that just cycles through the atmosphere, goes into the plants. It takes a few years from going, being in the atmosphere to going into a plant to going being turned into bioethanol. So it's renewable. As long as you can keep growing plants and keep growing animals, you can get this biofuel being produced. If we look at fossil fuels, so for example, we have octane here, which is a component of petrol. And we have this long chain hydrocarbon here, which is a component of diesel. The carbon dioxide that they're releasing into the atmosphere was stored from the atmosphere millions of years ago. So um, it wasn't going into a plant and then just going back out once it's combusted within a very short period of time. This carbon was extracted from the atmosphere millions of years ago. So because of that, um, excess carbon dioxide is going into the atmosphere, so it's worse for the environment because that carbon dioxide isn't necessarily getting absorbed to reproduce fuel. So the fossil fuels are worse for the environment um, over the long term than the biofuels. Today on Flipping Science, we looked at bioethanol, biodiesel, biofuels. That's it for science today. See ya.